I'm a lectern hugger, and I'm also a pointer hog. So <laughs> here we go. So many of us have shared epic moments together at the many restaurants in the cities where I have worked, as Joseph referenced, during my 20 years in hospitality. I know, you can't believe it. <laughs> it's been my pleasure and my honor to dine in your restaurants and celebrate your successes too. We're gonna click and see what happens. This is the dance party one. We're David Semenoff, where are you? <laughs> Where are my girls at? Is there any women in this audience? Any lady bosses? Good. <laughs> oh, and don't forget all of the sustainable caviar bumps that we have done together. <laughs> Some of you even did caviar bumps at that pool party from your toes. Yay for all that self-care and yoga. Well done. <laughs> The moments that I cherish most, though, are when we have clinked glasses together in support of great restaurateurs, chefs, mixologists, sommeliers, and all of us who come together in our love of delivering hospitality. It's what you do. It's why you are here. And all of us are here always trying to do it better. Many of us review a lot of resumes. I know time is like fluid and weird. Isn't it fun when people want to work for you? Little do they know what that's going to be like, right? Um, I'm not sure though what I would think if this resume came across my desk. Weird cropping and PowerPoint slide aside. I mean, how is it possible that she worked for so many legends, many of whom have been on this stage, when she is clearly so young? Like a few years out of college, right? My insecurities about the length of my resume all evaporated when this crazy, arguably overly lengthy for my age resume, which lists some pretty awesome names on it, brought me here to stand in front of you today. Kevin, Donnie, you chose me because of the length of my resume, right? And the quality maybe? I am a failure at many things, but when it comes to finding mentors for myself over the years, the millionaire matchmaker, that great sage, Patty Stanger might say, I have a great picker. Despite being rejected for so many jobs, everything has worked out pretty well. I've learned a lot over the years, though I never figured out what we are really looking for sommeliers with a little less experience and you are fully formed is code for. None of those hiring directors are here, so, you know, I'm gonna give you the finger, but I don't wanna put that on camera. Um, fate is a friend <laughs> and has led me to work and learn from some of the best in our business. These welcome conference speakers and legends, Danny Meyer, Rich Melman, and Kevin Brown at Let Us Entertain You, and T. Martin, who I saw a great video from. I worked for Commander's Palace for like one day. Nobody knows about it. It's a really long story, but we can save that for later. I'll do an Insta story or something. I have worked for so many brilliant minds and iconic leaders. And throughout the years, I have collected so much wisdom from each one. So that's what we're talking about today, mentorship. And it is my duty to share and pay it forward and mentor as much as I can because of all the great mentors past. When Paul Bowles Bevan was the chief people officer at Union Square Hospitality Group, USHG, he told me, you are a sprinter. I'm not sure how he knew, but I was a sprinter in high school and a 100 meter dash specialist. I don't know about that marathon situation, that Iron Man situation, I couldn't do it. I'm very impressed, Ken. And it's true, I am a total speed freak, not the drug. Um, and we're not talking about the drug. <laughs> I just really love efficiency. In track, you get to wear those cool shoes with the spikes. You fly out of the starting blocks with an all out, quick burst of speed, and you leave it all on the track. It's a lot like maybe last night's service for you. Did anyone work Saturday night service last night in your very popular restaurant? I'm looking at you up there, Team Monteverde. I mean, it's a lot like that night of service when you are inexplicably completely overbooked at 6 p.m. even though you opened the doors at 5.30. 
I mean, what are you going to do? How the heck did that happen? You can't fix it now, really, not the book, but if you're like me, you run, you sprint to the bodega or to 7-Eleven. You buy the front of the house a whole flat of energy drinks, right, so that they can have it during pre-shift, a little motivational rah-rah. You ask the baristas to start pulling espresso shots and to not stop until you tell him, right? Caffeinate the kitchen. You put on your game face. You harness every trick of the trade that you've learned from your mentors and muster every ounce of charm that you have. Oh, and then you definitely also ask the wine team to chill like every bottle of champagne that you have and ask the kitchen to order fire a bunch of gougere so that you can have a little something when people are waiting. Sorry, Phil. I think I might have made you wait in a few restaurants. I didn't mean to. Anyway, you get it done. You leave it all on the floor and you leave the guests whom you've seen late with such an incredible memory that they have no choice but to return. I learned that from some great mentors. I feel like I need Julia Momoz or Jean Cato or somebody who speaks Japanese to get this pronunciation right, but has anyone ever been to a Pecha Kucha? Right? Pretty cool. I guess there's been one in Chicago. I definitely want to go to the next one. But it's an arty way to present an idea, art, and anything. And it was created by two architects in Japan. The presenter presents 20 slides and has one minute per slide to convey their thought. So that was like 30 seconds. So I think I caught up on a little bit of time. Let's go. So Phil Collins, Lily Collins, Lily Collins mentor Sandra Bullock. Does it have some synergy? <laughs> anyway, on finding a mentor, I have this to share. Always seek out and work for the best, and be the best that they have so that they have no choice but to mentor you. I had a Sheryl Sandberg quote about that, but the slide didn't make it, sorry. Anyway, I was living in Houston when I decided that I wanted a life in restaurants, so I drove over and knocked on the back door at Cafe Annie, Chef Robert Del Grande's mahogany temple to southwestern cuisine on Post Oak Boulevard. It was the best place in town, period. When the chef de cuisine buzzed me in, I talked my way into what I later learned was a stodge. You know, a position where you chop a lot of stuff and you don't get paid. I spent months chopping huge flats of wild mushrooms, grating cheese, and picking perfect cilantro leaves for wild mushroom quesadillas. And then after those couple weeks, I graduated to picking mint for the pastry chef the only other woman in the kitchen at the time, or I filled squeeze bottles with creme fresca to zigzag onto those rabbit enchiladas with mole, fantastic. I was having a lot of fun, but my parents were pretty horrified that my very expensive biochemistry degree was about as useful as a broken ice machine. <laughs> I was loving life in the kitchen, but we didn't speak for a year. It was my first real lesson in making sacrifice for hospitality. My other lesson, in order to be indispensable, you need to learn all the parts of the play. I was definitely a bird dog with this and this. A PhD biochemist turned one of the fathers of Southwest cuisine, Robert Del Grande was really a professor at heart and gave us spontaneous lectures on everything, from his philosophy on roasting meat, complete with a whiteboard with equations and all kinds of smart stuff, to how to pair wines with food. I was enthralled when he created dishes for wines for a wine dinner with his sous chefs bringing out platter after platter of raw ingredients, vegetables, grains, sauces, plain roasted meats and more, and then mixing and matching them on spoons to taste with the wines. Very cool, very unforgettable. This was my first real restaurant job and there were so many lessons for me to learn. But the one that will always stick with me and the one that I am most grateful for is, a great mentor and a great leader takes the time to teach their team everything. Education is everything. Together, we rise. Kathy Annie exhibited the transparency, generosity, and a holistic hospitality, not just for the paying guests, but also for the people who showed up to serve, the team, that would inform my ethos for years to come. So Ken talked a little bit at Las, Las Vegas. I'm gonna talk about 816 West Armitage Avenue in Lincoln Park. I think that some of you have been to this place called Charlie Trotters. I spent five years there and probably poured wine for quite a lot of you, the older people in the audience. <laughs> I spent five years there and during my first few weeks of service, I cried every night when I got home. Yeah, it was really traumatic and I'm not a crybaby. 
Um, I convinced a sous chef uh, from Houston to move with me from Houston and Chicago, but after a couple weeks, he was completely over it and told me to give up. That's not just me, though. I wanted to prove my parents wrong. I was also determined to master the job and collect a few new mentors in Chef Charlie Trotter and master sommelier Joe Spellman. I don't remember what I screwed up on one particular night. Maybe the wine pairing did not get to the table in time, or maybe a course went to the wrong table. Oops. But I was on the balcony, and I looked up, and I looked into the hallway, and there was Charlie staring at me and my mistake. I went to go apologize to him after I apologized to everyone else, and he said to me, nice is not enough, and he walked away. Charlie's disappointed dad voice struck me to the core. What did he even mean? Nice is not enough? What does that mean? Does that mean I shouldn't be nice? I mean, I think I'm nice, but what else am I supposed to do? But I interpreted that moment as an invitation to seek out more knowledge and drill down into the hospitality mindset. If you've read Charlie's book, Lessons in Service, you know that those, some of those standards are make all of your servers put tape on their shoes, right? To pick up Lint, that legendary story. Sometimes you have to fire the customers. I was there on that day when we took out all of the liquor from the bar. There was no liquor anymore. One day, just randomly. And always go the extra mile, whether that means gifting a guest your tie if they compliment it or driving them home in the middle of a snowstorm. I decided to never make a mistake again. Easy, right? Except that I was always called into that office, the long walk up the stairs into the office with the desk, and Charlie always had a bon mot to share. I realized he thought that I was smart enough to figure all of it out, all of this, this life I was building in restaurants. Great service could lift mediocre food, he said, but great food could not overcome poor service. Substitute hospitality, and no truer words have been spoken. I told you, we're supposed to For a young Asian American woman's first two jobs, I was done. Drop the mic. Robert Del Grande's Cafe Annie and then Charlie Trotter's in Chicago. But when it came to the job hunt for the third, it was shockingly tough. There I was, unemployed after serving as wine director at one of the country's most serious wine places, temples. I sent resumes to every major hotel in Las Vegas with a legit wine program only to receive personal rejections from every F&B director on the Strip. It was brutal. I was burning through my bank account looking for work, but amidst all of this, I took a break to serve as a bridesmaid at a wedding in San Francisco. While there, I went to visit my friend Raj Parr at the fifth floor for a burgundy-fueled, you're all surprised, right, if you've met Raj Parr, burgundy-fueled, sounds about right, pity dinner. Certainly couldn't foot that bill. Thank God it was comped. I don't know if he was supposed to do that, but he did. It's great. <laughs> At that point, Raj told me he was leaving. Where is my resume? Flashed through my mind. Mine was the last on top of a pile of 60, I was told later. And long story short, I landed the wine director position at the fifth floor, the job that a million girls wanted. I literally won the lottery. Before getting that job, it was a dark time, but I learned a lot about rejection. It's not you, it's them, I learned. Don't ever let rejection stop you. Don't take it personally. Sometimes you don't get the job for something as dumb as not looking good in their uniform. Sometimes the casting director doesn't like your laugh. Sometimes the person doing the hiring is a jerk. Remember those late night wine parties at Osteria Via Stato? <laughs> Thank you. They were fun. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Paul was there, Donnie was there, it was a great group. Everyone in town would always come to State Street after finishing service at their restaurants to hang out with Angelo Gaia, the Antonori's, all the famous Italian winemakers, and so many more. If you stop into that restaurant, the signature wall near the kitchen door that we started back in the day is still there. I loved working for Let Us Entertain You, and working closely with Rich on this opening, too. He was with our team almost daily, and I had the privilege of hearing many of his well-documented stories and philosophies. The pickle story. Who's worked for Les Entertain You? You know the pickle story? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> the P Touch label story and why everything's labeled, and many more. But what I took away from his mentorship style is best illustrated by these two quotes, and these were two of my takeaways. The first was get into therapy <laughs> and buy a house. <laughs> I did both. The 
The Modern under Chef Gabriel Kreuther was a magical place that always smelled like bacon and onions. The best tart flambe that I have ever had, the best air conditioning, miles of underground subway tunnels, although it's pretty good here too. This is like 55 degrees. This theater would be perfect if we had like some cellar racks over there. Anyway, they had miles of underground subway tunnels to store my wines underneath MoMA. And running for a second bottle of any wine, we only stored one of each bottle up on the dining room floor, was the best workout. Three flights of stairs and three sometimes kind of slippery hallways to get to the wine cellar. All of that and the chance to work for and learn from Danny Meyer, for whom I worked for over four years. Before I arrived, a Chicago girl in a big city, I was so worried about my moment on the New York City stage. I want to make you proud. I will lose my Chicago accent as soon as possible, I wrote to Danny. His response resonated, don't lose your accent. He hired me for me. I'm making this quote into a poster and selling it. Does anyone know if I need permission to do that? <laughs> It is my wish for everyone that they find this kind of mentor, but more importantly, to be this mentor yourself. One time, sitting in Charlie's office, I thought I was about to be raked over the coals for being a bitch. Instead, Charlie coolly looked at me and said, maybe you should teach them something so that they will be grateful to you. While I didn't always manage it in that competitive dining room, I always actualized Charlie's words when I could. The next two mentors are not in linear order per my resume, but they were the kind of mentor that Oprah describes. They are both so incredibly well respected and talented and they completely trusted me to do my thing while it inspired me to find it inside of myself. There weren't a lot of women in my come up, so these two hold a special place in my heart. To paraphrase the song, the I'm every one part, the it's all in me part, yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned that job that a million girls wanted. After the wedding I attended, I extended my San Francisco stay to interview with Chef Laurent Gras. I went up to the Hotel Palomar's elevator to the fifth floor in my favorite of 12 black suits. That's all I had hanging in my closet, my friends know, black suits, and then my good luck string of pearls. I exited and walked toward the door to the dining room and spotted the legendary importer Martine Saunier a diminutive, short-haired blonde who I've never seen out of an impeccable Chanel suit. She was on the phone and looked at me, nodded and smiled, and I waved, like I do, and I walked into the interview. Laurent seemed a little confused. I was a woman, he was asking me about 100 Brier Bordeaux, the wine collectors, would they follow me, he asked, and then suddenly we said goodbye. Oddly, I got the job. Apparently, Martine got off the phone and must have called him immediately because she left a message for Laurent that said, hire her. From Martine, I learned that you have the power to amplify other voices. As one of the most respected women in the wine business, she knew how to use her voice to advocate for other women and speak up. As I enter the next phase in my career, I know that I have to do the same, and I do try to every day. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on to lectern now. Monkey bar was a trip. Joseph, that's sort of how you would say it, right? <laughs> I learned about grease traps, more about ice machines, and every other mess in a restaurant I couldn't escape by running into my perfect 55 degree wine cellar. At the time I had left the modern to seek out the next challenge, I'd won that really fun award and I was really on top of the world. Meanwhile, Graydon Carter wanted to revamp Monkey Bar and invited me for an interview in his home, two doors down from the famed restaurant Waverly Inn. He answered the door in seersucker shorts. Graydon, seersucker shorts. 30 minutes later, I left Graydon's house as the new GM and wine director of Monkey Bar, 4.0. Working with Julie was the ultimate highlight of my time at Monkey Bar. Julie is literally the best mentor in the world for Tales of the Cocktail. She's like everyone's cool mom, but can make a cocktail to knock your socks off. Compared to my wine knowledge, I was an absolute cocktail novice. As Mark Wagner from Gibson's will tell you, I'm a dirty Bombay Sapphire up with blue cheese olives. That's my dirty little secret. Now all of you know. <laughs> I didn't know why we needed to buy another damn ice machine or how to balance a drink recipe. I didn't know anything about fresh juice and barback scheduling. I didn't know why cocktails mattered. And frankly, at that point, I didn't care. 
I mean, wine sales matter most, right? Bigger check averages, duh. Julie changed my worldview about cocktails. She brought everything to the floor and to the fight. With her, there was never a moment that wasn't used for mentoring. She not only helped me learn to balance drinks and the importance of ice, but through small acts of selflessness. I mean, she was like this legendary bartender that would run food in the dining room, clear tables, help eager bartenders tweak their competition recipes after hours. She taught me to be generous. Everyone was her protege, but she treated them as her equal. She is a true mentor's mentor. Indian Jones! So the original slide actually had the Death Star and the Star Wars theme. I totally thought he was the producer, director of this movie. No? Okay. So I'm still getting rejected from jobs. I'm a pro at rejection. Just last year, while I ramped up my new experience at Atelier, my experiential agency, I applied for a job as a reservationist at the brand new Michigan Avenue Benihana. True story. It would have been the best commute in the world for me. It's right down the street from my studio apartment, and I thought it was a sure thing. After two rounds of interviews with a recruiter, the regional director for the restaurant called me and was so confused. Wait, what's her name again? It's Belinda Chang, C-H-A-N-G. He thought I was trying to steal their volcano onion secrets or something, corporate espionage. <laughs> I just needed the job. <laughs> I have so many more off the record stories to share, but let's bring this home with a lesson from me. There's a bizarro world to mentorship inhabited by what I like to call secret squirrels. Those people who would rather hoard knowledge out of fear that sharing will create competition. Secret squirrels would rather withhold their knowledge than use their powers for good. I've encountered my fair share of secret squirrels in my day and I just don't understand the mentality. They're the human embodiment of the technical challenge in the Great British Bake Off. Watch that show? You know the one. Paul Hollywood decides to subject the contestants, the bakers, to making an obscure treat or confection, but he provides minimal guidance about the process. I mean, all kinds of things exploding. It's so much fun to watch. Secret squirrels would rather see you stumble than grow as they look for ways to block, thwart, or otherwise impede from your potential. None of my mentors were secret squirrels. I'm not a secret squirrel. Don't be a secret squirrel. As I build my business of creating epic experiences for clients, I strive to embody these lessons that I've gleaned from these greats, these legends. Nice is not enough. You can freak someone out on your staff, see if they can figure it out. Go to therapy. Pebble, ice, matters. Thank you, Julie. Don't lose your accent. In the spirit of hospitality, I welcome you to reflect on your mentor's past and what they've taught you. How have you paid it forward? Who are you showing up for? What is your legacy? And whatever you do, make it mythic. And we will all be right there cheering you on. <laughs>